Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Dewey Reims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Reims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 28 in the Dewey Reims Bible, but Psalm 29 in the RSV. A Psalm for David at the finishing of the tabernacle. Bring to the Lord, O ye children of God, bring to the Lord the offspring of rams. Sacrifices of rams were common in the time of King David. In the time of animal sacrifices, any time prior to about 70 AD, rams and lambs were among the most recognizable sacrifices, since the ram was the animal that God had allowed Abraham to find and sacrifice in place of his son Isaac. Rams and lambs were also frequently sacrificed during special holidays, so the overall message of this verse is one of celebration of a holy occasion, in this case, the finishing of the tabernacle. Bring to the Lord glory and honor. Bring to the Lord glory to his name. Adore ye the Lord in his holy court. God is honored in worship and obedience. The ancient Israelites honored God's name so much that they almost never said it aloud, instead using the word Adonai, which means Lord. The court here refers to the court of a king, a place where the king held gatherings of the other powerful people in his kingdom. The place where sacrifices were offered and worship was done to God is being compared to a high royal gathering of mighty people. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of majesty hath thundered. The Lord is upon many waters. Many ancient cultures used water as a metaphor for chaos and danger, and the Israelites were no exception. However, the specific reference to the voice of God is reminiscent of Genesis 1, 2-3. And the earth was void and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the waters. And God said, Be light, Be light made. made, and light was made. The voice of the Lord is in power the voice of the Lord in magnificence. Nothing demonstrates power more than making something out of nothing. The difference between nothing and something is an infinite difference, therefore infinite power is needed to bridge that difference. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord shall break the cedars of Labanus. Cedars were known to be particularly tall and sturdy trees, and Labanus is probably a reference to the mountain Lebanon because it was known to have cedars on it. This psalm is saying that the voice of the Lord is stronger than the tallest, strongest tree on a mountain, and shall reduce them to pieces as a calf of Labanus, and as the beloved son of unicorns. It's unclear what animal unicorn refers to, but calves were special animals for sacrifice because they represented the first betrayal of the people of Israel. Remember the golden calf? The voice of the Lord divideth the flame of fire. This may also be a reference to Genesis. And God saw the light that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. Genesis 1, 4 The voice of the Lord shaketh the desert, and the Lord shall shake the desert of Cades. Cades refers to a section of desert at the far south end of the promised land, where most of the scouts sent ahead reported that it would be hopeless to try to invade. This was the reason why the Israelites had to wander in the desert for forty years before seeing the promised land. Also, it's more than a little likely that the rebellion of Korah took place at Cades, where God caused the earth to swallow up him and all of his men, a memorable event worth referencing in a psalm. The voice of the Lord prepareth the stags, and he will discover the thick woods, and in his temple all shall speak his glory. God provides people with the food and resources that they need to survive and build, so he'll be properly worshipped. The Lord maketh the flood to dwell, and the Lord shall sit king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. God is still Lord even when times seem chaotic and hopeless, and he will be forever. Our strength and experience of peaceful times come from him. That's worth keeping in mind. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.